सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली My guess is you've already made up your mind about the BBC and this is probably based on the controversy of a few weeks ago. Just to refresh your memory, here's what happened. The BBC broadcast documentaries about the Gujarat riots in which the prime minister did not come off well. The government of India protested, the IT cell launched a campaign against the BBC, various ministers attacked the BBC. this happened between the telecast of the first and the second episode so it was imagined that because there were so many protests from india the bbc would not telecast the second episode in fact it went ahead and telecast the second part of the documentary leading to more anger in india at that stage apart from the official condemnations the foreign minister went so far as to say that the telecast and its timing were not coincidental i have no idea what he meant but clearly there was a conspiracy a foot or at least so they thought so many people believed at that stage that the bbc was part of a white bashing media which was determined to do down india and to build it to last success if you believe that then you won't necessarily be surprised by what i'm going to tell you you could have another view of the bbc and that's the view that most people all over the world have which is that the bbc is not perfect but it is on the whole a credible news organization that represents things as best as it can that it has no hidden agendas and yes it sometimes gets things wrong but then who doesn't however it examines all issues and approaches them without favor without fear and without any bias so these are the two positions on the bbc i don't know which one you align with but let me give you a little background of what's happened over the last week the bbc has had its own problems entirely of the bbc's making and there are problems that have to do with that wonderful word impartiality now the bbc is a strange organization in some ways compared to say an indian tv channel or an indian news organization let's take the example of anchors on indian news organizations their role on television is that when debates take place they're supposed to be neutral empires this will not always happen but that at least is the theory that's what they claim they are it's the same with the bbc except here's the difference the bbc's anchors are never allowed to reveal what their own political feelings are they're not allowed to talk about them they're not allowed to put them on social media there's no question of tweeting about them now this is completely different from the indian experience our anchors are happily tweeting all the time giving us the benefit of their wisdom on a variety of political issues and it's not just anchors it applies to journalists newspaper editors reporters columnists all of them feel free to tweet and say what they believe the argument is that as long as you're impartial in your writing impartial in your television impartial in your work don't pretend you don't have any views or any feelings the truth is that journalists are human beings they have political views they can suppress them to some extent when they're working but you can't really stop them from writing what they believe and in the age of social media this will crop up on facebook on twitter god alone knows where some news organizations in india require journalists to write in their twitter bios all views personal just to indicate that these are not the views of the organization they represent which i guess is fair enough and there have been exceptions there have been i think quite shameful incidents involving indian publications but on the whole indian newspaper managers editors and owners accept the position that journalists must be watched when they are at on the job but on their own time in their own social media they can do what they like it's not the same with the bbc the bbc insists that you can't express any kind of political view on social media why does it do that well because the bbc is funded by something called the license fee this is the fee collected from users of television uh, 
by the government and used to finance the VDC. Now governments, because they have this kind of relationship with the VDC, whereby they collect what is its revenue, are always of the opinion that they have some power of the BBC. The BBC is of the view that the government has no power over it. The BBC is a great media institution. It's an autonomous organization. Its board of trustees, its chairman, are supposed to be completely independent of the government. And by and large, they have been. There are problems, of course. Various governments, I mean, from all political parties, have objected to things the BBC has said. When Tony Blair was prime minister, Alistair Campbell, his media czar, ran a campaign against the BBC and eventually the government even forced out Greg Dyke, who was then Director General of the BBC. But the BBC is held firm. It's got worse over the last few years because Boris Johnson clearly did not approve what the BBC was saying about him. And you would think that as a former journalist, he would understand, but no, he didn't. He kept going on about the BBC and he encouraged his ministers to do that. There was the unspeakable Nadine Doris who attacked the BBC, made threats about the license fee, and tried to keep the BBC in a state of intimidation. It's changed now because Rishi Sunak doesn't seem that interested in persecuting the BBC. But within the Conservative Party government and within the party itself, there is a sense that the BBC is biased against the Conservatives. That's a bunch of lefties. Which is funny because if they were a bunch of lefties, then Tony Blair should have had no problems with them. But he did. This is the position the BBC finds itself in. The Conservative government has also put in place its own people. The chairman of the BBC is a man called Richard Sharp, a wealthy man who was a donor to the Conservative Party and it has now been revealed was instrumental in arranging finances for Boris Johnson. The DG of the BBC is not a journalist. He is a former marketing guy who stood before as a Conservative candidate. So neither of these people are lefties or are known for their impartiality. We know what their political views are, even if they won't let the BBC's anchors tell us what those views are. So here's the situation. The BBC, which claims to be impartial, to be impervious to any kind of political pressure, acted last week in a manner that many people thought was extraordinary. There's a football player who you may remember from his time as England captain called Gary Lineker. He is now the lead football commentator on the BBC. And he's been involved in a personal capacity with the refugee crisis. He's done a lot to help refugees. Lineker tweeted that the language being used was uncomfortably reminiscent of the language used in 1930s Germany. Now, you may agree with him, I do, or you may not. That's not the issue. The corporation took the line that because he appeared on television, he was bound by its charter and therefore its rules which said that he could not express an opinion. It gets complicated because if you look at the BBC's rules, it says that people who say front an arts program are not under the same restrictions as people who front a political program. A man who judges a dancing competition may be allowed to say what his political views are because it makes no difference to the BBC's coverage of the news. So Lineker used that to explain why he had said what he'd said. There's another factor, which is that the BBC's rules apply to its employees. Lineker is not an employee. He's a freelancer. So should a freelancer, a former footballer, be restricted on his Twitter from saying something he cares about and feels deeply about unfortunate people only because the BBC is under pressure from the Conservative government? Yes, he should, said the BBC, and took him off broadcasting. This became a huge row in Britain because they said, why should this man be stopped from tweeting his own feelings? And the BBC said, no, those are our rules, which as we've seen, it's complicated. They probably aren't their rules. Lineker's allies, his friends, his colleagues, all of them rose up in such protest that all the other football commentators who were supposed to have fronted the show in Lineker's absence refused to turn up. So for one weekend, the BBC had no sports coverage virtually because all the major people said, this is ridiculous, we support Gary Lineker, we will not be part of this exercise. Eventually, faced with this collapse of its sports coverage, the BBC backed down and Lineker is now back on air. But the problem is that the issues still remain unanswered. 
We saw in India, in the India case, when the Indian government complained about the documentary, that the BBC said it would not bow down to any kind of pressure. It would stand by whatever its journalists said. But in this case, it's clearly bowed to pressure from the conservative government. So is the BBC brave only when it comes to foreign prime ministers? Is it so frightened of its own government? Can it talk about freedom of the press when it attacks people in other countries, but cow down when it applies to its own country? These are issues that are still being debated, and I don't think there's a clear answer. But there are consequences. Assuming that we will take the BBC as a leader of media relations and of media standards, and we were to apply them in India, where would that leave us? I'm doing this for the print. I'm not an employee of the print. I'm a freelancer. Would I nevertheless have to get every tweet approved by Shekhar Gupta? What about my relationship with the HD, the Hindustan Times, for whom I do two columns? Would they have censorship rights over everything I said on Instagram? I mean, if you think about it, it makes no sense. There's no way you can implement such a policy. I concede that when it comes to, say, newscasters, you might want to be impartial, or at least appear impartial, because you're funded by a license fee. But not otherwise, right? I don't know how this would play out. My guess is Tim Davy, the BBC's director general, has now backed down so completely that the issue will be settled. But the Conservative Party will not give up. There will be more pressure on the BBC. And it worries me because we've got away quite lightly this time. The Gary Lineker thing collapsed not because Mr. Davy and Mr. Sharp believed in ethics, but because they were facing a strike effectively by other presenters. But it reminds us how much governments want to control the press. It reminds us of the threats that there are to freedom of expression, the difficulties that journalists face when they want to say things. If the BBC had got away doing what it wanted to do with Lineker, I can think of no end of Indian owners and proprietors who would have said to us, look, even the BBC says this is fine. You can't say anything on Twitter. We have control over it. If that happens, I think all of us would be very, very depressed. And I think all of you, as people who want to hear a variety of opinions, would be disappointed and would be the losers. So I'm very glad that the BBC has been forced to back down, but still needs to answer the basic questions. Why did it try and censor Lineker and then take him off the air? And what about the double standard? If the conservative government says something is wrong, then yes, you sack the guy or you suspend him. If the Indian government says something is wrong, you say, hello, guys, we're all for freedom of the press. We don't care what you're saying. It's a strange double standard, and I never thought that the BBC would adopt it. Strangely, it seems to have.